Good biblical morning. Yeah. yeah, welcome back. Welcome back. Bible read along. Um, today we are lo- other way. Today we are looking at Luke chapter nine. I do it every morning. Um, today we are looking at Luke chapter nine. Grab a Bible. Grab a pen. Read along with us. Who is us? Well, I'm Daniel. If you're new here, say hello in the comments. Please let us know that you're here, where you're from. We love to hear from you. Just say hi. Um, And I'm here in person with my wife, Ashley, and we love the Bible. And uh, we are both Celebrate Recovery leaders in Alberta, Canada. And uh, we lead a Celebrate Recovery ministry, and I am the apprentice rep for Central Alberta. And so if you're here, welcome. What we do is we take one chapter of scripture. Usually, sometimes it's a long chapter, so we only get through a portion. But we try to take one chapter of scripture at a time and uh, go through it to understand the context and then also to understand biblical principles of recovery and application, how it applies to our life. So that's kind of what we do here. If you're just checking this out for the very first time, thank you so much for being here. We are live on Facebook every weekday morning that we can be, um, 6 a.m. Pacific time, 9 a.m. Eastern time in Canada and or 7 a.m. Alberta time, my local time. And we are also on YouTube. So if you want to check that out, YouTube under channels, Bible read along, and we post it there. We welcome your comments, reply to them there as well, but we are not live on YouTube. I think that's it. That's it. Merry Christmas. How was your Christmas? Ours was good. We had a quiet Christmas, no kids. And then a little bit of time with some of Ashley's family, and that was our Christmas. So that was it. How was your Christmas? Uh, We went to a candlelight service, too, for our church, which was really nice. Um, Had invited a friend along to that, and that was a really good time. What did you do this Christmas? What was the highlight of your Christmas holiday? Even if you are a Scrooge, a Grinch, there has to be a highlight in there. Maybe it's food. Whatever it is, what was the highlight of your Christmas? That is our question for today. So put it in the chat. And speaking of the chat, let's head over. I didn't set up the chat. Let me pick the right thing here. Oh, man. That one. You know it's colder when this window's frozen. It is cold here. It is like minus 30 plus the wind or whatever it is, but let's head to <laughs> our chat. Minus 36, actually. Minus 36 here. That's Celsius for those of you south of the Canadian-American border. Minus 36 Celsius, which is a lot in Fahrenheit. It's actually about the same. They're weird because Fahrenheit's way different, but then at minus 32, negative 32, it's the same. So Burr. minus 38 Celsius to Fahrenheit. Yeah, minus minus 36, minus 36 Fahrenheit. So it's weird how that Fahrenheit works. But anyways, um, welcome. And it is freaking cold here. It is minus 38 without the wind, or is that with the wind? Without the wind. Without the wind. Feels like minus 42 here today. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. I love here why do i live where the wind hurts my face um all right i don't know matthew's in the chat yeah we gotta we have to live here too so that's the way it goes morning matthew in bc Kelowna, bc what was the best part of your christmas matthew welcome lisa thank you so much for being here valentina in california i bet in california it is not minus 40 so Welcome, welcome. What? My auto captions won't turn off. I don't like reading the Bible on here. <laughs> oh, um, that's it for those in the <laughs> chat right now. Let's pray and get to the Word of God. Mine aren't on. Mine are on too, but I don't know how to turn off auto captions. Do you There's have to just? Buttons up here. The three on the top there. This is turn off captions, but it's not working. Well, so it's fine. Unfortunate. Whatever. All right. Let's pray. Let's get into the word. We are at Luke chapter 9. If you've missed our previous ones, they are available either on YouTube in order or on Facebook under guides. If you Sometimes there's a lot of Bible um, devotions and 
posts and stuff on Bible Read Along, we try to keep it clean so you can find things. So if you've posted something, we usually delete it within three to five days, just so you know. Um, and then just to keep our page clean. But if you are looking for them on Facebook, go to the guides under our Facebook page. Go to guides. And if you're here, make sure you hit. Uh, we did a poll just before Christmas. Make sure you hit the notifications that you want to be notified about videos. We had a lot of people that have joined our page that don't even know we do daily videos. So turn on your notifications so you can know when we are reading the Bible together. All right. Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for Christmas. Thank you for the season we have come through. Thank you, Lord, that you came to earth and Emmanuel and that you still desire to be with us now, your presence, your spirit. So, Lord, we open our hearts. We open our minds today. Teach us. Lead us in scripture. We ask that we all become Bible-based, Christ-centered, spirit-filled Christians in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 All right. This is dry. It is so dry. Let's go to the scripture. I didn't set this one up either. I was busy trying to share it out this morning because... It's in the 50s in Southern California, and she has a cold face. That's cold. It's in the 50s. <laughs> Man. It feels cold when you're, you're acclimated to it the does. temperature there, right? 50s. What is the 50s? Let's find out. 55 Fahrenheit to Celsius. That's about 12, positive 12 oh, here. Like tanning weather Which, yeah, for us, like, when, it, when it's been winter and then to go to positive 12, positive 15, that's short weather here it, where we live. So it is messy and the snow's melted. And, but, yeah, that is cold for California. All right, Luke, chapter 9, you know what to do. If you are ready, hit that thumbs up. Tell us in the chat that you are ready we love to hear from you. We want to make this as interactive. Is it a long one? Super long one? Oh, man. Part A. <laughs> Luke 9, probably it's part A. a. Um, but yeah, interact. Please be in the chat as much as you can or want because we love it. We love to connect with you. We want to make this interactive. We don't want this to just be me talking. Um, we have some surprises coming for the new year. We are we have some surprises coming. We're gonna just keep building and growing this. We got some plans. I'm not gonna tell you yet, but we have some plans for the new year. All right. Jesus sends out the twelve. Luke chapter nine. We are reading the NIV version. This is the same as the Celebrate Recovery Bible. If that is what you are reading, when Jesus had called together. Uh, called the twelve together, he gave them power and authority to drive out demons and to cure diseases. Now, not only to drive out demons, cure diseases, but let's highlight a leadership principle here. If you want to train other people, if you want to be a successful leader, you have to give people that you're leading power and authority. Have to, have to get. You have to learn to delegate. I'm guilty of this. I'm you have to. to you have to learn to because this is a Ashley just said she's not good at delegating this is a bible principle and especially if you're strong me and Ashley are pretty strong willed independent people so we're like oh I'll just do it myself I'll just do it myself Mine's and more of wanting to do it my own way because I like it the way I do it and Ashley and likes to do it her the own the control the way the yeah um but anyway, so th there's a leadership principle that one's free let's keep going to drive out all demons and cure diseases um, and he sent me out and he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. He told them, take nothing for your journey, no staff, no bag, no bread, no money, no extra shirt. Whatever house you enter, stay there until you leave that town. Again, I love this. We're going to just, we'll just go through scripture um, I know there's a lot, so we're probably not going to get to it all. So I'm just going to take my time. Take nothing. You know, when God does equip us to go to, when he calls us to do something, 
Sometimes we in our humanness, well, Lord, I'll just wait till I have more money in the bank, till I'm ready, till, but God, you've called me to do this and I don't know if I can do it or not. I don't have the education. I don't have the, we sometimes need to just obey what God is telling us to do without the worries of the world. Um, now he's also telling them when you go to a town, just stay in one house and stay there till you leave. But verse five, if people do not welcome you, Leave their town. Shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. So they set out and went from village to village, proclaiming the good news and healing people everywhere. This so basically is... Basically that's saying, don't take offense. If don't take offense. Accept you. Shake it off. Shake it off. And okay. just keep moving. Yeah. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake, shake, shake it. Okay. And that's what Jesus, that's where it actually came from. Tay Tay singing some scripture there. Taylor that's Swift. Right. That's Tay Tay for short, by the way. Um, she's saying we're close like that. So, um, uh, never met her, never talked to her. Um, but you know, we, that's, that's exactly right. Don't be offended. Don't be like, well, they don't like me and they don't, this is again, sometimes it's interesting because when God calls us to do something, um, our job is to obey. Our job is not how people respond to what he's told us to do. Mm -hmm. We just do what God has called us to do. And then we can keep moving forward and keep moving on. I'm guilty of this as well. I get stuck in thinking about, well, what did people think about me? Was that message good? Did that sermon go across? I ask Ashley a hundred questions after, even after Bible read -along. Did that sound okay? Did that, did I say anything wrong? Did I, you know, because I worry about it. And so I'm stuck in that a little bit. Now, um, I think for me, I don't want to justify, but I think there is a time to critique so I can move forward. And then there's being stuck in, oh no, what do people think? I'm worried, dust it off, dust it off and just keep moving. So they set out and went from village to village, proclaiming the good news and healing people everywhere. This is so powerful. Because until the time of Jesus, the world had not seen a leader like him that is teaching and preaching and the people love him and the church people are puzzled by him. And now he sends out, this is, this is the heart of God to send out so that we carry the message of the good news, the message of the kingdom and do the works of Jesus today. Verse seven, now Herod the Tetrarch heard about all that was going on. And he was perplexed because some were saying that John had been raised from the dead. Others that Elijah had appeared and still others that one of the prophets of long ago had come back to life. But Herod said, I beheaded John. Who then is this? I hear such things about. And he tried to see him. Now, we talked about that um, a little bit already it didn't get into it in this gospel of luke but john was taken to prison he was killed because he was speaking out against herod the tetrarch for having a relationship marrying his brother's wife his sister-in-law and so he took his wife and he you know it was awful evil and so john was speaking out against that and through those circumstances john ended up in prison and he ended up beheaded so He's hearing stories, though, about what Jesus is doing. Who is this person? Let me ask you a question. Personal self-reflection time. What are people saying about you? Dun, dun, dun. What's your reputation? I don't know. I just assume people say things that I don't like. And again, it doesn't... You, Ashley just said she assumes people are saying things that she doesn't like. I get that. Um, and again, this isn't to be stuck in what are people thinking of me that should not hold us back but sometimes we have to know what do people say about me what do they say about my personality what do they say about my behavior what do they say about my my connection to them do they think i'm a nice person a good person and i can't get stuck there but sometimes it's a good tool to evaluate where we're at and go okay how do i increase in love patience kindness whatever it might be Jesus feeds the 5,000. Move the mic here a little closer. When the apostles returned, they reported to Jesus what they had done. Then he took them with him 
and they withdrew by themselves to a town called Bethsaida. Such power, Jesus, go, I'm empowering, I give you authority, but I still recognize the need for us to connect as a team. Here's some leadership principles. We still need our leaders meeting, our team meeting, and we need time away from doing all of the things to just connect with each other and connect with God. Um, cool. Like if you if you actually follow how Jesus led, it would change. If you are a leader of a business, an organization, a church, um, ministry, whatever it might be, a family even, let's even just use the family unit. Um, if you are a parent in a family unit, what is this show? We go, we do things, we empower our kids, there's chores, there's, you know, we want you to go be productive members of society, but we still need time to come together and connect whatever that might look like. In our home, we try to do dinner together. We eat our dinner together, kids eat with us. Um, one thing that we haven't done that I we probably both would like to is more of a family vacation or something where we actually get some time away with everyone. <coughs> to go and enjoy each other in at life. At a resort where I don't have to cook. At a resort with all-inclusive meals. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. All right. When the apostles returned, they reported to Jesus what they had done. Uh, another leadership. I'm going to hit leadership because this whole chapter is filled with it. They reported there was a accountability. If somebody has given you, empowered you, given you a task, there should be an accountability. There should be a reporting of what you have done. Um, too often in ministry, especially we go, Hey, we need you. We need you. We need you. And we are need driven and we go, Hey, and we do minimal training and we go, go. And if you ever need me call, well, the problem is that when that person calls, we haven't met with them, we haven't trained them, we haven't, when that person calls, it's usually to say, I'm burned out and I can't keep doing this anymore. Because that's not how leadership works. Leadership has systems and structure that we send people, we equip them. There's a time to come back. There's a time we're spending alone training. There's a time we're equipping. There's a t there's feedback. We want to hear from you and connect with you before you're burned out and leaving. Anyways. This is all leadership stuff that I love. I thrive on leadership stuff. So sorry if I'm highlighting it too much, but I hope this is encouraging you and helping you. Again, if you have questions, comments, put them in the chat, please. Um, to a town called Bethsaida. But the crowds learned about it and followed him. He welcomed them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God and healed those in need. Late. <laughs> In the afternoon, the 12 came to him and said, send the crowd away so we can go to the surrounding villages and countrysides and find food and lodging because we're in a remote place here. He replied, you give them something to eat. This is another leadership type principle. So often we come with our problems. You know, I we should change this. We should do that. We should, well, what's your solution? You be part of the solution. They answered, well, we only have five loaves of bread and two fish unless we go and buy food for all this crowd, about 5,000 men were there. Now, this is an interesting phrase and not a lot of people hit on this because they like to picture Jesus as poor, his disciples as poor, unless we go and buy food. What does this mean? It means they potentially have money saved up. As a ministry, as people, people have been giving, donating. Women are following Jesus that still work full time and give their finances to support Jesus and his, his apostles, the disciples. Um, to me, I, when I've looked into this more, I actually see that they, they could have, Jesus is saying, we could solve this problem. Go buy food for 5,000 men plus women and children. That's a lot of money that they are carrying around. Jesus was, was he poor and oh, he was so lowly and yeah, he was born in a stable. I get it. He was born in a manger, um, but he didn't stay that way. I mean, even at the very birth of Jesus, and we've talked about this, who came? Well, the shepherds came and brought praise and brought, they spread the word. Then who came? Well, probably about two years after the stable, the, the, the wise men came, the magi came. And brought gold 
frankincense, and myrrh. Enough to fund the whole trip to Egypt. And there, anyways, Jesus had finances coming in. That's all that I'm trying to say here. As he's wondering what the names of the 5,000 men are. Well, the 5,000 men, that's awesome, Matt. That's a great question. So there was John, 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 Mark, Mark, Peter, 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 Simon, 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 Mark, Mark, John, John, Judas. Lots of Judases back then. Um, Timothy. Yeah, lots, lots of good names back then. So, um, and a boy named Sue, they were all there. So I don't know the names, Matthew. I know you're being silly. Okay. He said to his disciples, have them sit down in groups of about 50 each. Again, this is stuff I love because people just read through this in scripture and, and kind of go, Oh, yep. See, 50. Da, da, da. And then these are the same people that when I go, we want to grow. We want to know the numbers. I keep track of numbers of people that come to our Celebrate Recovery. We keep track of people that are joining and part of Bible Read Along, which is really weird because we keep adding people every day and our numbers not growing for a long time. So I, there's something weird with Bible Read Along. That's why I've been doing posts about do you even get the, the notifications and things because something's weird. But, um, Jesus cared about numbers. He actually cared enough to have them sit down in 50s. Why? So that they knew how many people were there. Um, maybe this is also a distraction technique as Jesus is praying and building faith and whatever. I don't know. But he had the, he cared about the numbers. And the disciples did so and everyone sat down. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven... He gave thanks and broke them. Then he gave them to his disciples to distribute to the people. Interesting. What do you have? God can use what you have. He can multiply it. And I also love this phrase. He broke them. Sometimes our brokenness, the things that we go through that have hurt us, ruined us, broken us, emotion is what God is going to use to multiply his goodness to others. Um, uh, yeah, I know. Then he gave them the disciples to distribute to the people. They all ate, all 5,000 men plus women and children. So this is, some scholars believe, about 20,000 people. Um, they had lots of babies. Because they had the babies. They had, you know, this was this was full house here. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 baskets of broken pieces that were left over. What did they do with those broken pieces? We don't know, but we know they picked them up. We know that there was systems and structures in place. Have them sit in 50s. We want to know how many people are here. We are keeping count. Um, you know, sometimes people get so offended. Well, I don't want to go to a church that counts and is about numbers. And well, Jesus counted too. I don't understand why we get so caught up sometimes in these things. Um, how big is this next section? Not too bad. No, let's keep going here. Oh. There's two smaller ones. Like Peter. Yeah, we'll do a couple more here. Peter declares that Jesus is the Messiah. Once, when Jesus was praying in private, Jesus had his own private prayer life, and his disciples were with him. He also had corporate prayer times, times with just his team, training, equipping. Okay. He asked them. Who do the crowds say I am? This is what I just said a few minutes ago. Who do pe What do people say about me? Well, we shouldn't ask that. We shouldn't care that. Well, Jesus asked it. So is there a right way and a wrong way to ask this? Yes. It's always about our heart motivation because Jesus just said, who do people I want to know? Who are the people saying that I am? <coughs> Excuse me. And they replied, thank you, little dirty bean. What is this thing? What are we doing here? Bear. We got a little polar bear or something here. Mm. It tastes like polar bear insides. Okay. Um, so <laughs> Peter declares that Jesus is the Messiah. Once when Jesus was praying in private and his disciples were with him, he asked them, who do the crowds say I am? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah. 
Still others say that you're one of the prophets of long ago that has come back to life. This was all of the things that Herod was hearing that we heard already in the beginning of this chapter. So these are true rumors about Jesus. This is really what the people are saying, not just Herod's people. Now Jesus asks though a more important question. But what about you? Who do you say I am? Peter answered, God's Messiah, the chosen, the sent one, the, to take away the sins of the world, to forgive our sins. Um, and this is where it's personable, personable. <laughs> it is personal again. We can go to church, be surrounded by Christians, have great friends, go to a Christian school. But until we come to a point where who do we personally say that Jesus is, it is. It is missing its full potential. It might be a great club, might be a great group to hang out with, might be positive influence, it might make you feel better. But at some point, we each personally have to make a decision that says, you are God's Messiah. I believe it. I would die for it. You are the one. Jesus predicts his death. Yep, this will be our last portion here. <laughs> Jesus strictly warned them not to tell this to anyone. And he said, the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and he must be killed. And on the third day raised to life. I have heard so many people say, well, Jesus didn't actually predict that he'd die and rise again. It was always vague. It was, there is so many scriptures that it is just clearly laid out. I will die and rise again. Now, how do we know that this is, is accurate? This isn't just, remember, Luke was not one of the disciples of Jesus. He didn't personally hear this, so he would have had to study this, hear it from others. In other words, all of the disciples, the, the apostles, the people that followed Jesus said, oh no, this happened. Now, it's a lot harder to keep a lie if a lot of people are saying the same thing and actually believe the same thing. So anyways, Jesus did very clearly tell his disciples that he is the son of God and that he would rise from the dead. Then he said to them all, sorry, he said to them all, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up the cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. Whoever loses their life for me will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit their very self? Whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his glory and in, and in the glory of the Father and the holy angels. Truly I tell you, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God. <coughs> now, interesting thing here. Who do people say I am? They say I'm the Messiah. We know from other accounts of the gospel, you know, that this is Peter that said this at one point. Um, and Jesus says, you know, it's my father who revealed this to you. And then he's talking again here about the heart. Are you willing to give up everything to follow me? Yes or no? That's the question. Are you willing to give up everything? Because if you're not, if you're, if you're not wholehearted about this, and you don't fully know me. I don't fully know you. And then he said to them, um, you know, go. He's going to send them out. Some of you standing here will not taste death. I don't fully understand this. I'm going to be just honest. Um, and I've read different things from scholars and stuff on this. But um, some of you, because all of the disciples did die. So they did taste death before they saw the kingdom of God. So the kingdom of God here must mean more than just Jesus's return from heaven, his second coming to earth. Um, is that what this means on 26? Whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the son of man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his glory. Is that saying when he comes back? Yes. I, I, I believe so. That that is verse 26 is saying, you know, when the Son of Man comes in his glory, the glory of the Father and the holy angels. Now, 
again, scholars say two things. This either could mean the coming back of Jesus, the second coming of Jesus, or this could mean the glory that was revealed when Jesus was raised from the dead. Um, and, you know, Jesus wasn't ashamed from of his disciples when he was raised from the dead. Even when they rejected him, Peter, you know, he still wasn't ashamed of them. He gave them chance after chance. Peter, do you love me? Then feed my sheep. Peter, come back. Peter, you know. So could this mean his resurrection? Yes. Could this mean his second coming? Yes. I don't know. I don't think it matters either way. I think the heart of this is, are you wholehearted committed to what's going on here? Yeah. Is your heart about, and that doesn't mean that, again, you have to be poor and give up everything and be a nun or be a monk and, you know, this, but is your heart, is, is Jesus above everything else in your life? Would you be willing to lay down anything to keep Jesus as number one? And if this is the second coming of Jesus, um, some will not die. They will not taste death. We know from the early church, the martyrs, does this mean maybe I've had some people say the taste of death is actually what he's talking about here because they didn't, there was many of the disciples and martyrs that died um, singing and praying and thankful that they were given the chance to die. It wasn't a, I'm dying and this is so hard. And it was a joy to die, to lay down your life. They was, it was a reward for laying down your life for the kingdom of God. Could it mean that? Possibly. What do you think? I don't know if we're going to solve it today, but it's fun to study and research and find out. Um, there you go. That's it. What are you guys saying? Let me know in the chat. Let's head over there and connect. Um, my Christmas, Matthew said his Christmas was good. Uncle Rod, Aunt Heidi and her dad, Govan came to my house for Christmas dinner and we had Christmas sausage casserole. Mmm, that sounds great. And cheese and bread. Yummy. Um, okay. Who were the names? We don't know. God is good all the time, no matter what. Amen, Matthew. And I like what Lisa said here. Our, our broken crumbs can feed others. I like what she says after. Yeah. I was pretty crummy. <laughs> yeah, I was I was pretty broken too. I and like I panko. I love that. Yeah, I'm like I'm like panko breadcrumbs, panko breadcrumbs here. Um yeah, our brokenness. I'm I'm gonna do a talk for our celebrate recovery. I'm not I don't wanna share it all yet, but I have an idea um about brokenness, how our brokenness actually is what brings the light to others it's what so yeah when we are broken god can use it um i think that's one of the reasons i love celebrate recovery too because it's not be perfect it's okay to come it's okay not to be okay yeah. and it's okay to be a mess um but the important part of celebrate recovery is that you recognize that you're admitting it you're, you're working to improve it you're working the steps you're not in denial um you know, sometimes when we think, oh, I got it all together, people don't see that brokenness and they can't find the healing or feeding that they need. Um, Matthew, how did Jesus know he was going to die and be raised from the dead in the Bible? Um, did Jesus want to do that in real life? Yes. He knew, Matthew, that his death and resurrection was the only way to save the world. So b between from even the time Jesus was 12, he's in his father's house, I said at that part of scripture, I don't think he knew everything, but he does know now he has started ministry. He's just taking things one step at a time and God is revealing things to him as he takes the next step. So he knows his miracles are being known. He knows there's rumors about him. There's there's a reputation about him. People are talking about him. They're saying he's John the Baptist. They're saying he's Elijah. He knows he's he's just taking these next steps. And he God, I believe, is revealing to him what the next steps are, which would be laying down his life, but that he will be raised back. Um, Jesus also knew the scripture. And there was a lot of prophecies about Jesus being raised from the dead, the Messiah being raised and... You know, so, and then he's prophesying about himself. 
So kind of cool. That's it for today, guys. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Please hit that share. Um, make sure you're following the notifications. We really, I'm not trying to be weird about this. I know there's a lot of stuff going on in the world and you hear this at different, oh, we're being banned and we're blocked and our, there's something weird about Bible read along. Our posts are not getting out. Um, our numbers, we literally, I could show you on the phone, like we add people almost every week for sure. We're adding 15, 20 people and our number is not changing. So there is something weird about the numbers right now that I need to look into. But until we get that figured out, the best way to keep us growing and to help us is to share this out. So please share it out. Invite a friend. That's it for today. Thank you so much for being here. And we will be back tomorrow with the second part of chapter nine. God bless.